In this video we're going to talk about exceptional demand curves. Um, the majority of demand curves slope downwards. In other words, at a high price we buy less than at a small price. At a small price we would buy more. But there are exceptions and there are some demand curves which are different to the norm and just for completeness we need to go across these just to just to fill out all the blanks. So our normal demand curve would be something like we've got here. As the price falls from P1 to P2, the quantity demanded increases from Q1 to Q2. As the price falls, it's cheaper and we buy more. However, it is possible to conceive of this situation, that as the price rises, we buy more. Uh, may not sound logical, but uh, may not sound like something that is we're going to bump into all the time and in fact that is the case these are exceptions but as I said earlier just for completeness we need to look at how this can happen and what sort of goods they are but as I said we need to keep it in perspective there are very few of these around and uh, they are the the odd bits that we need just need to to mop up and be aware of the first one we'll look at is called the Giffen good. This is a curiosity in economics, a um, very rare curiosity. In fact, it was really only observed, I think, by Sir Robert Giffen in Ireland during the famine years of the 1840s. At that time, Ireland suffered from a major disaster, natural disaster, when the uh, potato crop failed and uh, literally millions of people were affected. Uh, many people immigrated and many people starved to death. So during the period, this period, Giffen observed what was happening to the demand for uh, potatoes. It may seem a bit ghoulish, but uh, it's in the literature, so we, we need to look at it. Under famine conditions, it's rational. It's almost automatic. You don't have to think about it. Um, but it's certainly rational to reduce the length of the food chain. It's very inefficient to have cattle walking around, or sheep, goats, or whatever, because uh, they burn up energy. So if you're threatened, if, if, if you're facing famine conditions, the chances are you will go back to root crops, because you take the energy directly from the earth, cut out the, the middle producer, so you don't have meat or that type of food. Um, the Irish population responded to the increase in the price of potatoes which was affected by um, blight uh, which was their staple food it's what they were was what they ate they were a very poor poor race of people and uh, they had no choice so uh, they responded to the the failure of the potato fam uh, potato crop by reducing their purchase of other items because potatoes were their staple food so they tried to release income from other purchases by not purchasing other things so they could spend it on potatoes this of course freed the income as I said and so as the price increased the price of potatoes increased more was demanded so really that's the demand curve the given good now there are some technical uh, aspects of this related to what's known as income and price effects but the upshot is it's an upward sloping demand curve and as the price ri rose uh, people tried to buy more of it. So that's the Giffen good. A second type was sometimes known as the snob good. This is known as also the Veblen good named after Thorsten Veblen who observed this type of good mostly in America at the turn of the, the 1900s. Parts of America at that time were becoming very rich due to oil and a lot of people had a lot of money and uh, they didn't know what to do with it. So uh, they were importing lavish European goods, perhaps grand pianos or chandeliers. But in fact they themselves didn't know how to play the piano or they were not connoisseurs of art. So, <coughs> why were they buying the goods? Well, they were they were buying them for to indicate their socio-economic status. 
they wanted to signal the world that they were cultured people, that they had a lot of money and they wanted to signal it. Um, in our society people drive some cars to signal others that they are better than them. So if you've got a Porsche, you're better than you're better than me. I don't have a Porsche. So you can look down on me. So it's a part of your socioeconomic status. You feel superior. You're probably also suffering from some sort of uh, problem about your your confidence in life, but that's beside the point. Um, so snob goods are related to um, what we would call conspicuous consumption, what economists would call conspicuous consumption. You're, you don't demand the Porsche because it's a good car, although apparently it is a very good car, but you don't demand it for that reason. You demand it because it's signalling the world that you are a better sort of person. You are a superior person. Okay. Therefore, the demand for snob goods uh, is po um, positively sloped. So the Giffen and the snob good both have the same type of demand relationship. As the price of Porsches increase, they become even more of a snob good. If a Porsche was the same price as a Fiesta or as a, a Corsa, <coughs> it wouldn't be such a... it would be a good car, but uh, it wouldn't have the same appeal. So snob goods and or Veblen goods and Giffen good have upward sloping demand curves. Um, there are others. Expectations of future price rises. Well, you could say it's really not a demand curve because it, it links prices over time. But again, just sidestep that for the moment. Um, <coughs> for example, the course of the stock exchange prices. If prices on the stock exchange are rising then people might want to buy more shares. If they buy more shares, they're going to make it rise even further. It's cumulative causation. So if the price, if share prices are falling, people will sell. Uh, that's a positive relationship. Prices falling, people selling, positive. Prices rising, people buying, positive relationship, positive demand curve. The same happens in the housing sector. When house prices are rising very dramatically, lots of people want to buy. When they're falling, uh, the market is reversed. In both cases, as the price increases, more is demanded, so that the demand curve has a positive slope. So we looked at, in this session, we've looked at three types of good where the demand curve could be upward sloping. The given good, the snob good, which is also known as the Veblen good, and in this situation, in the last situation, expectations of future price rises. So that should explain the exceptions. I hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.